Yep, yep, yep. It is a new week and a new episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, and this is October 2nd. Now, what we do on this show is I bring you hot OTC and penny stocks. I do the DD and I share it with you. Now, these aren't deep dives. These are superficial, but I'm giving you enough information to show you the potential. You pick up the ball from there. Now, I determine hot stocks by looking at the technicals. That is to say, I go to the charts first. I look for charts that have heat. I'm looking for volume coming in. I'm looking for a breakout setup or huge bounces setting new highs. Something that makes that chart look hot. Once I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around looking through the press releases and the filings trying to find a catalyst. When I find the catalyst, I've got a perfect setup for a hot penny stock. And at the end of the day, I've got maybe eight or 10 of these and I got to narrow it down to three. And I bring you three that have hot charts, have potential. Now the rest, they are hot. They do have potential. What makes me choose the three I share and the ones I don't? <laughs> luck of the draw sometimes, my friends, luck of the draw. So first one we're going to take a look at here is C-Star Medical Holdings Corporation, ticker ICU. Her chart is grand right now. It is an atypical breakout chart that she's been chiseling at for the last four days and is breaking out. Now, she had a perfect opportunity to break out about two months ago. Perfect, and she missed it. And right now, it looks even better. And she just had news come out a couple days ago to keep the chart moving. So it's a perfect candidate for a hot penny stock. So I see you. She finished today at 42.4 cents and over 60% gains today. She is on the NASDAQ, a major exchange, which means you're going to be able to trade this for free. There's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks. And you can trade it pre-market and aftermarket as well. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is ICU all about? Well, they are a medical device company. They're not working with pharmaceuticals. They're working with devices and procedures. They tell us here that C-Star Medical is a medical technology company that is redefining how extra corporeal therapies, that is outside of your body, may reduce the consequences of excessive inflammation on vital organs. C-Star Medical's novel technologies rely on a science and innovation to provide life-saving solutions to critically ill patients. The company is developing and commercializing cell-directed extracorporeal therapies that target the effector cells that drive systematic inflammation, causing direct tissue damage and secreting a range of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines are released in your body to help you, but you get too many of them, they start attacking you. And this is when ARDS, uh, acute respiratory disorder syndrome comes in and things like that. Now, they've got a little more information that does help us understand what their drug is doing. Hyperinflammation is the overproduction or overactivity of inflammatory cells that can lead to damage of vital organs. It occurs when the body overproduces inflammatory effector cells and other molecules that can be toxic, damaging to vital organs and result in multi-organ failure and even death. This is known as the cytokine storm. Unlike pathogen removal and other blood purification tools, their device selectively targets the most highly activated pro-inflammatory cells. The company has observed that these most highly activated immune cells are turned off in a low calcium environment. So the SCD therapy mimics that environment, creating a trap, attracting these highly activated effector cells and neutralizing them in such an environment. And then they return the blood back to the body all clean so that the people feel better. And we have learned that this can help a lot of situations as you're gonna see in the news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, <laughs> how is that for an explosion? We went from 3 million shares for an average over the last 30 days, jumping to 57 million shares today. And the news is a couple days old. Looking at the share structure for ICU. Well, they only give us the outstanding share count, which isn't bad. That's only 18 and a half million shares. I say it all the time, but there may be a new viewer here. Your float, which we have no idea what it is, cannot be over your outstanding share count. So we know it's not going to be higher than 18 million and could be considerably less. 
and anything under 10 million is considered a low float. 18 million, that's in the neighborhood. I like that. Not a bad float, whatever it is. Financials for the company. Ooh, we got nothing annual. And we got nothing quarterly. Nothing here. You know, it's a lot like an R&D pharmaceutical company. They aren't making drugs, but they are making medical devices, which all have to be cleared by the FDA, which is what the news is about today. Taking a look at the disclosures, we don't have anything here. So let's just jump right on into that news. So we've got two pieces of news here. One that came out at the end of August and one that came out at the end of September and both have to do with this device. The first one that came out at the end of August, they tell us that the company announced the publication of a case series of three critically ill children with severe acute kidney injury who were safely treated. All three children were in the ICU at two different hospitals and treated with the continuous kidney replacement therapy. Each showed gradual improvement following the treatment with the device and normalization or near normalization of kidney function at 60 day follow up. So we can see this device is working with kidneys on children right here. The next piece of news takes it a step further. FDA grants breakthrough device designation to C-Star for their device. The company announces receipt of the FDA's breakthrough device designation for its patented first-in-class cell-directed device for use with patients in the hospital intensive care unit with acute or chronic systolic heart failure and worsening renal function due to cardio syndrome. So now you're talking about the heart, the same exact device. The device is able to halt the downward spiral often perpetuated by hyperinflammatory state driven by the innate immune system, giving these patients a fighting chance. And in 2022, the device did receive breakthrough device designation for use with adult kidney injury. So they've just used it on children. It's already been proven to work with adults. Now it's being used on hearts. This can be used in a lot of different ways, but it has to be approved for each use. You just can't put it out there for one thing and have it be used for lots and lots. They've got to get approved for every single one. But as you can see, this most recent news has had a huge effect on the volume, jumping up from 3 million to 54 million. And the chart looks like it is breaking out right now. Let me show you. I see you is the ticker we're looking at. <laughs> this is C-Star Medical Holdings, and we're going to do the charting for it on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform. You get it when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And doing that doesn't cost you anything either. So we are looking at C-Star Medical Holdings. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high back in February of $6.90 when she was over her 200 that was short-lived. She came down under the 200 and she's been under there all this time. She hit a low last week of 15 cents. Now I told you she had an opportunity to break out right there, folks. She could have easily jumped up and just took off, but she didn't. She didn't even try. We don't have one spike here, not one. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. And then she continued falling from that missed opportunity down to this low bubble. Now, right before she hit that low, she had a spike go through the 200. And I'm always looking for these spikes, but I don't want them to come down any lower than where they started from. Well, this came down lower. I would have scratched this. I would not have continued watching this one. But surprise, surprise, she bounced off of that low. She hit a new high spiking through the 200 and then today she did it again and now she is up over top of that up here at 41. This is looking very strong folks. All of our SMAs are turning up right now with our 200 just about level. All of our oscillators are looking excellent. You want them pushing up. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pushing up with a big spread from that pink line. Our MACD is climbing fast and furious with these green bars accumulating, getting bigger. And our RSI is clear up to 66 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So nothing was going on for, what, uh, 16 days here. She was just underneath the 200, had a little bit of poke here, fell back down. Then we had that strong poke 
down too low. Surprise, surprise. She took off, came down way deep. But look, she took off and got even higher than she was the day before. All of our SMAs are turning up now, including the 200, and they are all in the right position. These are looking great. Osculators look outstanding, folks. They are all pushing up and very strong. And now you can get a nice picture of our volume. Baby bear, mama bear, papa bear. It is getting bigger and bigger day after day. Five day, five minute. So there's our low bubble of 15 cents. She was under the 200 after that spike. Got back up on top of it, bounced once, took off. This happened pre-market. This one happened in the middle of the day, so I don't see any habits here. She bounces when she wants to bounce. She hit the 200 again, bounce. And now she's ignoring the 200. She's starting to climb. She bounced off of her 50, and now it looks like she is bouncing off of her 20. That has become her predominant floor. She's testing it right now. Ooh, did you see that? We got some aftermarket activity. She is broker 20. She's coming down to the 200-day haul. Does eh, she pay much attention to the 200? No, she doesn't. So I would expect probably she's going to come down to the 50 and hopefully not any further. Technicals are definitely dipping on the five-minute chart. But she was running hard. 54 million shares today on news that came out on the 29th. It didn't even mention anything about money, just FDA approval. Once they get approval, then they can start selling it to hospitals. So I see you and you see me, and we should both be putting this on our watch list. It was bound to happen. We are going to take a look at a biotech. This is Saab Biotherapeutics, ticker S-A-B-S. I can't ignore these as much as I would like to simply because I hate reading the technical jargon and worse trying to explain it. The fact of the matter is they are making money every single day. I've got a habit of posting the pre-market runners daily. I do it from 7.20 in the morning to 9.30. I post every single penny stock runner I can find. I post them on Twitter, my Penny Boys Discord group, and two Facebook pages. And I got to tell you, folks, more than 50% of every day's runners pre-market are biotechs and biopharmaceutical companies. And most of them are R&D, research and development, not making any money. So we can't ignore them for long. So Saab, she's got a hot chart. It's pretty close to an atypical breakout chart, and she is running for that 200 right now, hard and fast. And she just had news come out today. The company's been having financial problems. <laughs> Who hasn't? Well, the news that came out today solves those problems. So Saab's finished today at 66 cents with almost 5% gains. And she is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So what does Saab's do? Well, generally speaking, Saab Biotherapeutics is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing fully human multi-targeted high potency immunoglobulins without the need for human donors or convalescent plasma to treat and prevent immune and autoimmune disorders. That's as deep as we're getting right there. Thank God we don't have to read any news about the drug. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a nice increase. It's not a big number. We went from 36,000 up to just under 300,000. So you're looking at about uh, seven, 800 percent increase on volume, which is a nice increase, even though they're small numbers. Share structure for SOBs. Again, we don't get a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is just over 52 million, so our float won't be any higher than that, and it could be considerably less. And if you like to follow the market caps, Saab's market cap is just about 33 million. Taking a look at Saab's financials, are they making any money? No, they're not making money. I did jump into their financials and I wanna share that with you right now. They have money coming in, but you wouldn't call it revenues because they're not selling anything. They have grant revenue. They tell us, boy, big change here. Back in 2022, they had $6.3 million in grant money. They tell us here in 2023, they've only got $85,000. So that's a huge difference, folks, a huge difference. And that is their total revenue. There is no difference. Now, to back up what I was saying about their indebtedness, 
As of June 30th, 2023, the company has experienced net losses negative cash flows from operations and had accumulated a deficit of $62.1 million. And they need to get this fixed because they're not making any money. They've got to get it from investors. They've got to get it from us or big whales. And thank God they didn't come to us for it. So jumping on over to those disclosures. What do we got here? We've got an 8K. Now, did I bring this 8K up for us to read? No, I didn't. Let's jump into this. I think this has to do with the news we're going to take a look at. It sure does. So let's just jump on into that news. The news came out today, as I said, Saab Biotherapeutics announces private placement of up to $130 million to advance development of lead drug candidates for type 1 diabetes. They tell us here the company today announced that they have entered into a securities purchase agreement. The company has agreed to issue and sell shares of preferred stock, not our common stock, preferred stock in a private placement. The offering will provide up to $130 million in gross proceeds for the company. The full proceeds, when funded, are expended to fund the company through 2026 and top-line phase two results. Now, I found a little bit more information down here, which was nice to find. In addition... Investors will have the right to exercise warrants to purchase up to an additional 130,000 shares of the company's preferred stock for an additional $130 million of additional gross proceeds to the company. So up front, they get $130 million. And when these investors cash in their warrants, the company will get another $130 million, $260 million, and they're $62 million in debt right now. That sounds like good math to me. So that's what's going on. They've just fixed their indebtedness. Everything is looking better. They can continue on with their trials and get this from phase one to phase two. And the chart is showing the excitement. I am ready and primed to chart SOBS for you. This is ticker SABS, SOB Biotherapeutics, and this is a six-month, four-hour view. We have our low bubble and our high bubble in the same month, April of this year. Low bubble came first. That was at 36 and a half cents. One week later, she hit a high of $1.45. You're talking an easy 400% run right there. She came down, bouncing hard on this 200-day SMA and going right back up to that $1.45 again. We've got a strong resistance up there now. She came back down, didn't go hardly anywhere for a while until she lost a footing and went down. And here recently, she has hit a low of 41 cents, and it looks like she's changing trend. She was on a downtrend. Now it looks like she's on an uptrend and is serious about it. She was underneath all her SMAs, broke them all. Once she got to the 50, one bar, not only two, but through the 200-day SMA. And what's most important, when she came back down, she came down higher than where she started. This is a perfect setup for a breakout. Our volume, that has been increasing since our change of trend. Oscillators are looking good. We just had a crossover on our percentage price oscillator, and it's pushing up. Our MACD has crossed the signal line, looking strong. And our RSI is at 60 right now, but a bit plants it. It's just kind of sitting there. 20-day, one-hour view. So for 13 days here, 17 days, she hasn't been doing anything but falling. Hit a low here of 41 cents. Lots of enthusiasm right behind that bubble. Went through the 200-day SMA on our one-hour chart. Came down and then shot right back up to it. And for a whole day, beat her head on that 200-day SMA. But this morning, she was out of it. She jumped from 61 up to 85 cents pre-market. And then fell back down to this 9-day SMA, which is where she sat this entire day. Until after market, and she is starting to grow right now. Our oscillator shows strength coming into the picture. Our PPO is pushing up stronger. We have a crossover happening right now on the MACD. And our RSI is still at that complacent 62. Looking at our 5-day, five 5-minute. Five minute. So there's our low bubble of 41, that excited jump up over the 200, even on the five-minute chart. 
Then she got up on the 200, hitting this high of 85 cents, and it looks like she's negotiating with the 50 and the 20-day SMA. And right now, she has been going sideways until after market. We are seeing some excitement here after market. I also notice our brand new 200-day SMA has changed direction as well. It was falling and is now climbing. Looking at our oscillators, change a trend. Look at that. She has bounced and she is crossing over right now. Our MACD has had a same thing, a strong bounce crossing the signal line. And look at our RSI. It has jumped from 40 <laughs> up to 60. So I think there is still something to come here, folks. They got all that money, 130 million at least. They could get up to 260 million down the road. This is going to solve their financial problems. They're going to be able to keep that drug moving through the trials. How high she's going to go? I don't know. These R&D companies get bounces and then they come right back down. So don't, in my opinion, don't stick around very long. When she starts to run, take your gains. Get out. Be happy. We'll talk about another one in another video. I would have had no problem sharing three biotechs with you today. There were lots of hot charts and biotechs taking gains today, but I wanted something else a little different. So I found Oxbridge RE Holdings. This is ticker OXBR. Now, the company hasn't got any news right now, but they do have some hot filings. And the chart is blazing. It is like the last one. It is breaking out right now. She has been in a downtrend for a long time. But even as she's been falling, she's been taking these huge bounces. And right now, she's doing it again off of a 52-week low. But this time, the 200-day SMA is as level as it's ever been. This could be the breakout. So OXBR, she finished the day at $1.67 with virtually 20% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. So what is this company about? Well, they got a product I don't completely understand, but I'll read what they got here. Oxbridge RE Holdings currently operates through its primary active subsidiaries. One of them is Surance Plus. This is a Web3 focused subsidiary that currently leverages blockchain technology to democratize access to high return reinsurance contracts via digital securities. And you're going to see an example of what sort of returns they are giving on these. Another one of their subsidiaries, Oxbridge Reinsurance Limited, is a licensed reinsurer that provides reinsurance business solutions primarily to property and casualty insurers in the Gulf Coast region of the United States. And another one of their subsidiaries, Oxbridge RENS, is a licensed reinsurer with SEMA and operates as a special purpose vehicle sidecar providing third-party accredited investors with access to reinsurance contracts with returns uncorrelated to the financial markets. And finally, they tell us down here that they have a big investment in Oxbridge Acquisition Core. This was a SPAC on the NASDAQ, but they just did a deal with Jet AI, and their new ticker now is JTAI. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we do have an increase there, about 300% at least, jumping from a meager 24,000 shares up to a meager 88,000 shares, but it is a 300% increase in volume. Share structure for Oxbridge. Hey, look at that. We've got a low float. We don't even have to guess at it. Outstanding share count is under 6 million. Our float is going to be under 6 million. Financials for Oxbridge. Well, they've been growing, I'm presuming, going from under a million to 1.2 million and jumping to 10.2 million in 2021. Or did they sell an asset? I really don't know. If they didn't sell an asset and that's all revenues, they had a big dip back down to $850,000 in 2022. And what's strange here is that it not only shows they didn't pay anything for the money they're earning, but it doesn't show it as profit either. So I really don't understand that. Looking at the quarterly, ah, we got all kinds of figures here. Our last quarter in June, we did $691,000. And again, we didn't pay anything for it. And I don't know how much they got to keep. So let's jump on over to those disclosures because this is where all the information is. There are no pieces of news to consider. We have an 8K 
that came out back in August. And then we have three Form 4s. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management, acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. And we're primarily interested when they buy it or sell it. And that's what they've done here. So we're going to take a look at each one of these real briefly. First one here is a Form 4. This is the CEO and president. He has purchased 50,000 shares at $1.19, which now gives him a total of 130,000 shares. We have another purchase here from a 10% owner, Martin Allen. He has bought 100,000 shares on the 20th of September. Right here is the date. 100,000 shares at $1.10. Then we've got another one. This comes from Martin Allen as well, that 10% owner. He's been busy. Look at this, folks. On the 8th, the 11th, and the 12th, he bought 7,000 shares, 23,000 shares, and 69,000 shares. I do believe that's like 200,000 shares he's already purchased. And if memory serves, right here, this SC13D, I think he has bought enough right there. Alan S. Martin. A total of 844,000 shares, giving him now 13% of the company. So we've got a lot of inside buying going on right now. Plus, we have one more filing. This is the 8K. Our stable performance continued in the second quarter of 2023 with, again, no losses incurred. Now, this is important. This is about that special product that they're selling that gives good returns that are outside of market fluctuation. During the second quarter, we were pleased to complete the private placement of approximately 2.4 million in securitized tokens by our new Web3 focused subsidiary, Surance Plus Inc., an alternative investment opportunity leveraging key qualities of blockchain technology to create a well-designed digital security. Investors in the securitized tokens are expected to generate a potential annual return of an estimated 42%. Just hold them, just stake them, whatever you want to call it. Don't sell them. In one year, they'll give you 42% gains on your investment. Wow, that's pretty good, folks. We were also pleased that subsequent to the second quarter, Oxbridge acquisition, that SPAC, uh, did close a business combination with Jet AI Inc., a software aviation company. The company developed software leveraging artificial intelligence and offers fractional aircraft ownership, Jet Card, aircraft brokerage and charter through its fleet of private aircrafts and those of operating partners. So that's what you got going on here, folks. They've got a little bit of this and they got a little bit of that and they've got a hot chart. And that's really what it's all about because I'm about the technicals. Without a campfire, that piece of wood we found over here isn't going to burn. We need a chart that has fire. Then the filings and the press releases make sense. Let's go take a look at this chart. Oxbridge Holdings has a hot chart. This is ticker OXBR, six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago in January, we had a high of $2.77. And just about a week ago, we had a low under a buck of 96 cents. Now, she has been on a downtrend all this time, but she has had lots of time on top of the 200 as well as underneath. And she's had a lot of big climbs. And right now, she is doing it again. The volume was light back here compared to what's happening now. It is definitely growing. Off of this 52-week low, 96 cents, she is changing her trend. She was growing steady and methodically towards the 50-day SMA, and once she hit that, she exploded. You can see it. All the bars got very huge, and she plowed right through the 200-day SMA without even looking back. All of our SMAs are turning up, and our 200-day SMA is now at the very beginnings of starting to churn up. It is looking very nice. Oscillators are hot, folks. They're going to the moon. Every single one of them is pushing up, and our RSI is clear up at 81 right now. You can't go wrong if every oscillator is pushing up. Checking out our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was running downhill to that low bubble, 
Off of that, she started working towards the 200, which she snapped once she got there. And you can see every single SMA is beautiful right now. They're all turning, going the same direction like a spread open broom. Oscillators are still hot. Every single one of them is pushing up and our RSI is still on fire up there at 78. Five day, five minute. That's a nice climb. She was down here at 99 cents, just above our 52-week low bubble. She's riding right on that 50-day SMA all the way here until two days ago when she decided to launch off of that heavy load and get onto that light nine-day SMA. And she just started tearing it up, dropped down to the 20 once, pushed herself back up to the nine, and it doesn't look like she wants to turn around and peek at anything right now. And she has hit a high today of $1.68, and she is right there right now at that high, $1.68. All of our SMAs are picture perfect. You couldn't ask for anything better. Oscillators right now, you know, they are going up very tempedly. They are pushing up casually and slowly. Uh... Yeah, the MACD's on top, barely. Everything looks calm. <laughs> that chart looks hot. And back here, that chart looks scalding. So I'm liking this, folks. OXBR, put it on your watch list like all the other stocks we looked at. It can't hurt to have them there. If you see volume come in or the price jump, at least you have a heads up about them. If nothing happens, no harm, no foul. Remember, folks, do some more due diligence. I give you enough to get you excited so that you see the potential, but not enough to convince you to invest. That's your job. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.